Good afternoon and welcome to the Conservative Yeshiva online class, Little Books, Big Voices, Four Minor Prophets. I'm excited that we're going to be learning together this semester. We'll be studying four out of the twelve minor prophets. The prophets we'll study are Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Joel, and Haggai. These are four short books, but they pack a big punch. They're strong books, and each book has a powerful message, as well as uh, many other things that we can learn about the history of the period in which they were written, the prophets who spoke, and the prophecies that they brought to us uh, as a message from God. As, so we'll be learning together these four books. The 12 minor prophets that they come from have been understood as one book altogether for many, many years. As early as 200 BCE, in the book of Ben Sira, we read that Ben Sira understood the, he knew the books of the Tanakh and he knew the 12 minor prophets as one book. He mentions 12 prophets and he doesn't mention the individual names, he mentions them in a list of books of the Bible. So we know that that early, these prophecies had all been brought together. But in fact, the prophecies in the 12 minor prophets span quite a long period. It is thought that the earliest of the 12 minor prophets, Amos and Hosea, come from even maybe the late 9th century or the 8th century BCE. That's, um, that's starting maybe in around 805, um, going all the way down to the late 700s BCE. The prophets we'll be looking at are later. They start in the 7th century BCE, which was a tumultuous time. I'm posting a timeline of the kings and the historical events that took place in the 8th through the 6th centuries BCE. And many of you will remember that in 722, the Assyrians conquered the northern kingdom. After this time in the 6th century, sorry, in the 7th century, it was a very tumultuous period in the land of Israel under the challenges of the Assyrian state to the north the Assyrian conquerors who had conquered the northern kingdom and who continued to be a force of pressure to be reckon, reckoned with in the entire region. And then, of course, uh, the Assyrians were eventually defeated by the Babylonians, and then the Babylonians eventually conquered Judea in 586 BCE. So it's these years between 722 and 586 that we will be focusing on in the four prophets that we study, these years and the years after the return, when the Jews returned to the land in 538 BCE. So we'll be talking about this entire period and seeing how the prophecies we read can shed light on this period, as well as give us messages for our own time. We'll also be asking questions, what is a prophet and what is a prophetic text? We have many different kinds of texts in the four prophets we'll be looking at. It's uh, surprising, but it's true. In these four short books, we'll see different kinds of texts. We'll see pieces of narrative. We'll see what we might call oracles or messages from God. And we'll start by seeing a complaint of a prophet, the prophet Habakkuk, against God. So we'll be looking at different kinds of uh, texts and different kinds of language that the prophet used. And we'll be asking if the prophets are having the same function in each book or if different prophets are functioning differently. We'll also see that each prophet has his own vocabulary, his own way of speaking, and his own choice of metaphors. And sometimes, as in the book of Joel, we'll see a prophet develop a metaphor that was started by an earlier prophet. So we'll have a chance to explore all of this, and we'll be asking the question of what messages these prophets bring for us. In the introduction to the course, I've posted a text uh, from the Talmud in which it says that any prophecy that was recorded was needed by future generations. That is, the prophets that have come down to us, these books, are meant to have a message for us today, and we'll be asking ourselves what this message will be or can be. We'll have many different answers, I'm sure. As we study the minor prophets that we're looking at, some of the language may be difficult, and it may be difficult for us to find our way into the text. So I want to suggest a few different frames, and different frames will be of interest to different people. Some of you will want to focus on the Hebrew language, really seeking to understand how the prophet uses language, the language that the prophet uses, and maybe also other biblical books and how it's related. 
Some of you will be more interested in the historical context, how we can connect what's written in the prophetic text with other historical evidence that we have. Some of you may be interested in metaphors and images that the prophets use. Why did they choose these particular images? What can these images tell us? Were they speaking about concrete aspects of their life and world or about imaginings? And finally, some of you, and I hope all of us, will be interested in the themes of the and theology of each prophet. Again, what is the message about God and about the Israelite people and the Jewish people that we can learn from each of these little books. We have a very diverse group of students learning together, I'm very happy to say, uh, students from all over the world, and I'm very much looking forward to your contributions. We've posted a Hevruta matching forum, a place where you can write if you would like to find a study partner for the class, and uh, we hope that people will connect through this forum, and that everyone in the class will have a chance to learn with someone, uh, even if you're sharing the text that you're uh, uh, kitchen table or at your Shabbos table or whatever works for you. But we hope that everyone will have a chance to discuss these t uh, these texts in Chavruta and also that very much that you'll participate in the discussion forums online and that you'll ask questions and answer questions and be part of an ongoing dialogue as we seek to understand these four little books that have such big voices. So uh, we're looking forward to your contributions. I'll uh, be posting study materials here about uh, both an introduction and study materials about Habakkuk. And I'm looking forward to sinking our teeth into this material together and to all your responses. Thank you for being part of the Little Books Big Voices class.